Our lecture today is about a drainergic system. The last lectures we discussed, obviously, cholinergic system. But first of all, I want you to know that the term ergic means release and adrenaline means adrenaline. I want you to know that adrenaline is also called epinephrine. Nephrine means nephron of the kidney, which is the functional unit. And epi means above or the top. I mean adrenaline released from adrenal gland and specifically adrenal medulla, the inner part of the adrenal gland. I want you to know that Adrenal medulla, which secretes 80% of adrenaline and 20% of noradrenaline. Noradrenaline has also another name which is called norepinephrine. The same idea as the word epinephrine. Epi above and nephrine are the functional unit of the kidney. Here I mean the nephrine. Today we are going to discuss the chemical transmission of sympathetic nervous system. The last lecture we talked about acetylcholine which is the main transmitter of para sympathetic nervous system and I told you that sometimes some postganglionic sympathetic releases acetylcholine on blood vessels of coronary and skeletal muscle vessels and sweat glands I told you in the last lecture we should talk in order any transmitter you should know synthesis, second storage, third release, four actions which depend on receptor. Nor adrenaline or adrenaline is sensitized or formed by amino acid which is called tyrosine. Tyrosine enter the nerve and I want to focus on something so important that tyrosine is the source of adrenaline and noradrenaline which are called catecholamine it is also the source of thyroid hormone which we are going to discuss in third year tyrosine is converted to dopa and this occurs by hydroxylation and the dopa is converted to dopamine by removal of carbon dioxide called decarboxylation dopamine is converted to noradrenaline by oxidation noradrenaline converted to adrenaline by adding methyl group CH3 which is called methylation so here we form noradrenaline which is the main chemical transmitter but if you have severe stress or you are exercising more you need the liver to break down more and more glycogen so here you need conversion of noradrenaline into adrenaline this is very important and to make it easier for you to be recited it makes like a rhyme scheme or a music tyrosine dopa here is no music 
دوبا دوبامين نور ادرينالين ادرينالين as if they are doubles دوبا converted to دوبا مين and converted to نور ادرينالين زين ادرينالين here we discuss senses second point is storage any chemical transmitter is stored here in vesicles the same as acetylcholine what about release i told you before that any nerve needs an action potential which opens here voltage gated calcium channels calcium extracellular has higher concentration than inside the nerve so calcium moves inside bind the two vesicles at ending of the nerve causing its rupture to release the nor adrenaline the same idea as i discussed before in acetylcholine so doctor after release of the chemical transmitter we need actions action of any transmitter here depend on binding to a receptor i told you before any chemical transmitter is a key and the receptor act as a lock nor adrenaline is the first messenger which bind to the receptor drone in this black rectangle and here is the active binding site which it will bind to so if we want to imagine what will happen i want you to know that nor adrenaline or adrenaline will bind to these receptors the first receptor to be discovered is called alpha alpha in a latin language means one and second receptor discovered is called beta and the beta in the latin language means two so we have alpha and beta alpha is subdivided into alpha 1 alpha 2 and the beta receptor also is subdivided into beta 1 and beta 2 any receptor we should talk about five main points site of the receptor where it is found structure of the receptors all these receptors whatever alpha or beta are serpentine and i told you before that they are spiral shape like this spiral like a coil which is the inner structure of the receptor it traverses the membrane seven times as if you are sewing by using a needle so this is important all of them are serpentine which is similar to that of muscarinic receptor doctor alpha one present where present on the spleen present on pupil on the wall of blood vessel so important present also in the ejaculatory duct so important to know where is alpha one present and i want you to imagine that blood vessels have got two receptors one is present on the outer part called 
alpha 1 and you have a receptor present in the lining of the vessel suppose this is the vessel which I talk about so the receptor present outside is alpha 1 this is alpha 1 and you have smooth muscles lining the wall by this corrugated black lines so we have a receptor inside called beta 2 you have two receptors which we are going to discuss doctor how these receptors act you told us that we should know mechanism of action alpha 1 if noradrenaline bind to alpha 1 on blood vessel the end result will be vasoconstriction vasoconstriction or constriction of the organ it means in physiology excitatory which is important in order to say that excitation occurs or not it depends if you have contraction of the organ so it is excited it is stimulated or activated if not it is called inhibitory suppose the vessel relax so this is inhibitory do you remember when i talk about sympathetic action i told you there is a sympathetic tone which means sympathetic is acting all the time to mild constrict the vessel to maintain your blood pressure in its average pressure 120 over 80 so doctor how vasoconstriction occur inside noradrenaline bind to alpha 1 on the wall of blood vessels you know that alpha 1 binds to guanosine to G protein which I tell you before discussing the muscarinic receptor this envelope dot black dotted envelope is called G protein this G protein is formed of three parts alpha part beta part gamma part alpha part bound to guanosine diphosphate when noradrenaline bind to the receptor here so and intra cellular or in the blood vessel you have inorganic phosphate bind to guanosine diphosphate to form guanosine triphosphate I told you before guanosine triphosphate or GTP is the source of energy for the alpha part so it will be dissociated from other parts of G protein from beta or gamma part it will move inside so when it moves inside bound to GTP it will activate inside the vessel an enzyme the enzyme which is going to activate it will form second messenger I told you before we have two types of second messenger either calcium or cyclic AMP so if you act by one of them this means that you have abundance of the enzyme which form it in blood vessels you have abundance of phospholipase enzyme phospholipase enzyme 
it is going to convert phosphate dial inositol di phosphate or pi p2 into ip3 plus di acyl glycerol this is important and i tell you before calcium will be formed how diacyl glycerol will release the calcium from the mitochondria inside the blood vessels from endoplasmic reticulum calcium if released it will act here as a second messenger which means it will activate another enzyme inside the blood vessel. This enzyme is called protein kinase C inside the vessel. Kinase means moving phosphate inside to the myosin head which I drew. I drew this organ representing the heart with full details and this is blood vessel but blood vessel depend on calcium as a second messenger activate protein kinase C transporting phosphate from inside to myosin head in the smooth muscle lining the wall myosin head which I draw here the same as in here myosin has got two head neck and the tail each head bound to adenosine diphosphate it needs one phosphate to form adenosine triphosphate when myosin head has got ATP it will bind to these circles black circles represents what represents actin you have actin on the right actin on the left each actin is bound to this blue line which is called z line you have z line to the right and the z line to the left so if you bind the actin, you will pull it to the center of sarcomere. Pulling. If you pull the actin here, and then you pull the actin there, the two Z lines come approximate to each other, causing contraction. This is very important. This is the explanation how sympathetic through noradrenaline will mediate vasoconstriction. I will repeat it again for you to seem be very simple. Noradrenaline bind to alpha-1 receptor on the wall of blood vessel. Alpha-1 here is serpentine receptor which bound to G protein formed of alpha, beta, and gamma. Guanosine diphosphate bound to alpha will bind to inorganic phosphate inside, forming guanosine triphosphate, which dissociate alpha part by its energy moving inside. Activate phospholipase C here, which convert PI P2 into IP3 plus DEG. DEG diacylglycerol will cause calcium release from endoplasmic reticulum. Calcium here will act as a second messenger which activates protein kinase C. Protein kinase will transport phosphate to the myosin head which has got ADP to form 
E T B. So myosin bind it to actin, pull it towards into the center of sarcomere in the right and in the left. Mechanically, the two Z lines approximate to each other contraction occur. So this is alpha one. What about alpha two receptor? Alpha two receptor is present on platelets, which will be discussed in the second year regarding blood module, and is present pre-synaptic. What do you mean? You have here a nerve, and then you have below another nerve. Nerve above and the nerve behind. In the nerve in front, number one, and this is the nerve number two. So you have in the junction between one and the two, here you have got what? A synapse, which is a junction between the two nerves. Suppose noradrenaline is released too much from the vesicles and we want to prevent excess release of noradrenaline what we are going to do in this nerve you have got a receptor here as its terminal part representing by the black rectangle this receptor is called alpha 2. So noradrenaline will bind to alpha 2 receptor here before the synapse to prevent its release. It is a source or it is an example of autoregulation as if noradrenaline autoregulates itself. I cannot be released more than Z. So alpha 2 is inhibitory. It is inhibitory. It is important to understand. It inhibits nor adrenaline excess release from the synaptic vesicles. Mechanism of action. It acts by decrease cyclic AMP. Remember that alpha-1 act by increase calcium. What about beta-1 receptor? Beta-1 is present in three areas. Number one is the heart. Number two is juxta glomerular cells of the kidney. Number three is fat cells. So important. Beta-1 here is always excitatory. What do you mean here by excitatory? Do you remember? I mean contraction of the organ. Activation of the organ. This is the end result. I don't want you to be confused. We have alpha-1 excitatory, beta-1 excitatory. So I make here a model for you. Look to this part. This blue square represents heart. This is the organ. Beta-1 receptor here, rectangle. And noradrenaline bind to beta-1 receptor on the wall of the heart. The same mechanism will occur. Alpha part dissociated by forming guanosine triphosphate inside. Activate adenyl cyclase inside the heart. Doctor, which means that heart act by cyclic AMP as a second messenger. I told you that any organ act by only one second messenger. Either 
cyclic MP or calcium. Here there is abundance of the enzyme which form cyclic AMP. I have abundance of adenyl cyclase inside the heart. Cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase enzyme. Kinase means what? Kinetic, transporting inorganic phosphate inside the heart to bind to adenosine diphosphate present on the myosine head forming adenosine triphosphate so adenosine triphosphate here will make the myosine head to pull this black circle actin towards the center pulling that line here and myosine head on the left side will pull the actin molecule inward pulling the Z line inward two Z lines become closure approximately to each other causing contraction and if you remember I told you before that sympathetic accelerates all cardiac properties as auto Maticity and conductivity, excitability, contractility. And I told you that if it increases the force of contraction, it is called positive enotropic effect. Do you remember this? And I told you that eno means force. And this is the god of force in ancient Roman era. This is very important. Today we are explaining mechanism of action. Suppose beta-1 receptor is present on fat cells. The same mechanism occur. Activity will be what? Breakdown of fat into fatty acid as a source of energy for tissues. This is called lipolysis. This is so important. So, beta-1 acts by what? Increase cyclic AMP. This is important. You should know. What about Dr. Beta-2? Beta-2 is present on smooth muscles lining the wall of vessel. On any smooth muscle. Doctor, what do you mean by this? Any smooth muscle. Suppose I cancel this and I tell you beta-2. And instead of making this blue square the heart, I will say it will be bronchi. I wanted to give another example for a smooth muscle organ which has got beta-2 receptor. For example, bronchi. If I ask you a question now, what is the effect of sympathetic on bronchi? You will tell me that sure bronchi dilatation to get more oxygen yes bronchodilatation according to my explanation is regarded to be excitatory effect or inhibitory effect it will be doctor inhibitory any organ relaxes or dilates means inhibitory it is not an action or a positive action this is very important doctor what will happen look to what i drew and what i write inside this square the same thing will occur in the bronchi but with only one difference doctor what noradrenaline or here it will be adrenaline and you will know why later on 
today adrenaline binds to beta 2 receptor on the bronchi GTP will dissociate the alpha part inside activate adenyl cyclase so doctor smooth muscles also have the abundance of adenyl cyclase like the heart so where is the difference it will active form cyclic adenosine monophosphate as a second messenger activate protein kinase A but this enzyme transport phosphate in organic phosphate to myosin head which has got ADP but here there will be no affinity or no interaction between inorganic phosphate and ADP so I will put the symbol X no interaction between them which means adenosine triphosphate will not be formed so there will no pulling of actin towards the center here and there from right and left side so contraction will not occur so in biochemistry they told us there is a topic called affinity affinity of interaction is there is interaction between adenosine dye phosphate and inorganic yes or no if there is affinity contraction occurs and this is example which happened in the heart if not it is applied in bronchi so beta 2 here is inhibitory it is the same as alpha 2 and I want to imagine something although cyclic AMP increases in beta 2 but relaxation occur the same transmitter the same mechanism happened the same second messenger but you have a reverse action I am a professor who explain this video some students attending this lecture will have affinity to my explanation they will like it others not I am the same professor I am the same second messenger sometimes there is no interaction there is no chemistry between you and me or it will be a high chemistry and interaction occurs so this is so important I want to press that beta 2 receptor is present on the liver and we are going to explain this later on this is important in order to understand what about stimulated boy and the blocked boy before I tell you this I want to press on something important which adrenaline has a high affinity on beta 2 receptor more than nor adrenaline while nor adrenaline has a high affinity to alpha 1 so there is a specificity adrenaline bind to beta 2 on a smooth muscle better than nor adrenaline nor adrenaline bind to alpha 1 better than binding of adrenaline to alpha 1 this means that nor adrenaline is a better vasoconstrictor because alpha 1 is present on wall of blood vessel while adrenaline is a better vasodilator because beta 2 on a smooth muscle lining the wall of the vessel is inhibitory which means it will cause vasodilatation 
or relaxation. While both of them, nor adrenaline and adrenaline bind to beta 1 on the heart with equal effect, almost, almost equal effect. This is important to know. Uh, alpha 1 is blocked by prazosin and alpha 2 blocked by a drug called uhimbin. Beta 1 blocked by atinolol. Atinolol or endrol. These drugs you should know its name. Beta 1 blocker is so so important you should know. Doctor Y, suppose I am a hypertensive patient. My blood pressure is high. Do I need that the drug you will give me will buy will activate beta 1 on my heart? If you do this, heart will contract more. It will eject more blood into the aorta, causing more and more elevation of my blood pressure. So I should give you beta-1 blocker, which is called atinolol, or its trade name, Indral. Suppose I come to your clinic, with my bronchi constricted, I suffer from bronchospasm or bronchial asthma. This means that I need a bronchodilator. Bronchodilatation means inhibitory action or excitatory action. It means inhibitory action. So, I should give you a drug similar in action to adrenaline, which bind to beta-2 receptor on the bronchi, causing bronchodilatation. So, beta-2 stimulant is called salbutamol. This is important in order to understand salbutamol is very 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 important so our lecture today is clinical applied what is the importance to understand the receptor it is serpentine or it is ionotropic what is the importance of that in order to treat the patient well this is basic if you have hypertensive patient, which drug I can use? Beta-1 blocker. If I have a patient with bronchospasm, I need beta-2 stimulant, activate this receptor to end by inhibitory effect or bronchodilatation. Adrenergic drugs, you have many drugs in the book which stimulate the release of norepinephrine or prevent the release of norepinephrine just read only because it is applied for postgraduate students not for undergraduate students after we finish all this information synthesis, storage, release, discussing actions Depending on receptor alpha or beta, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, regarding site, structure, mechanism of action, stimulated by, blocked by, we want to end by removal of the transmitter. The same thing as we are accustomed to do. Do you remember acetylcholine? I told you that. We should make active reuptake. Noradrenaline here is released. I want to get rid of it. I will return it back to store it again inside the vesicle. Or 
I can break it down by certain enzymes. One enzyme is called NAO. This is abbreviation of monoamine oxidase. Or you can abbreviate it by MAO regarding the Chinese great leader. Mao, monoamine oxidase. So, if you oxidize it by Mao, it will form an, a compound which is not active called dihydroxymandelic acid. Or, do you remember noradrenaline, which is converted to adrenaline by adding methyl group? CH3 I can add the methyl group in the wrong position in biochemistry they told us if you add any carbon or methyl group something like that in a wrong position you are making inactive compound so like this The enzyme is called catechol. C is catechol, which refers to the adrenaline and noradrenaline because collectively they are called catecholamines. O is the position O, which you transport the missile group in it. It is the wrong position. So when I was a student, I tell that O is zero, like you write it in mathematics. It is a zero position. It will not be beneficial in transportation. Catechol, O, M is missile, T is transferase. So I will make it easier for you. I will make it from the last letter to the first. Transport missile in zero position, in O position, to form norimetanephrine. I want you to imagine what I am saying. Not nor epinephrine, nor metanephrine. And the metanephrine makes it inactive compound this is important nor metanephrine not nor epinephrine so I have how many ways till now one to restore it again active reuptake two by now monoamine oxidase three by catechol O missile trans Race. Four is excretion in urine. You are excreting the excess of noradrenaline in the form of VMA, vanyl mandelic acid. If vanyl mandelic acid in urine is elevated or increased, this means that. You have excess secretion of noradrenaline. You have a tumor in adrenal medulla. And this tumor releases more and more of noradrenaline. This tumor is called pheochromocytoma. You know? Oma means what? Tumor in a Latin language. Cyto means cells. What about chromo? Chromaphene tissue in the adrenal medulla which has got the cancerous gross. At the end of our lecture, I hope that it was beneficial for all medical students we talk about adrenergic system regarding senses, storage, release, actions, 
actions depend on receptor alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 we discuss site structure mechanism of action regarding drawing either you depend on calcium or cyclic amp as a second uh, messenger stimulated by blocked by and i told you that you have a plenty of drugs you should know don't know only know beta 1 blocker and beta 2 uh, stimulant and the removal of noradrenaline or adrenaline by reuptake second male third count c-o-m-t for excretion in urine as vinyl mandelic acid and as i told you about para simpaso mimetic there is also simpaso mimetic which means drugs similar in action to sympathetic which are act by stimulating alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 all stimulating the receptor are called mimetic and all which block the receptor are called sympathetic so i want you to imagine i told you before mimetic and the antagonistic of it is lytic suppose i give you a drug to stimulate sympathetic ganglion it is mimetic do you remember any preganglionic whatever sympathetic or parasympathetic releases acetylcholine bind to nicotinic receptor on the ganglia so nicotine small dose or acetylcholine can activate the receptor on the ganglia and we suppose adrenal medulla is a modified ganglia so if you activate the nicotinic receptor on it it will be activated releasing adrenaline and noradrenaline sympathetic which means that you block the nicotinic receptor on the adrenal medulla as nicotine large dose for example or hexamisonium this is important to know at the end i hope this lecture was beneficial to all english students all my best wishes for you you have dr muhammad faiz with my great hope for success of all of you thank you